When we have a headache, we don't reach out for a pack of multivitamins. We get the best available painkiller. People are inclined to solve burning problems and solve them fast. Committing to a gradual improvement? Not so much. Vitamin versus painkiller analogy is widely used in the startup world. Painkiller products solve big, urgent problems now. Vitamin businesses are the ones that don't solve immediate burning problems. They usually sell something nice to have or sometimes promise a specific improvement over time. There's a huge stigma attached to building a vitamin business. The advice out there is loud and clear. Build a painkiller, not a vitamin. Painkillers are must-haves. Vitamins are nice-to-haves. Painkillers meet an unmet need. Vitamins improve something, but that something already exists. Customers want painkiller products now. Vitamin products? Uh, they know they should, but they are not in a hurry. So, does it even make sense to bother building a vitamin business? Short answer is yes. For the long answer, keep watching. There is a lot of advice for building a painkiller product, but what if you have detected a need for a vitamin? How to build a vitamin product and make sure it grows as fast as a painkiller product would? My answer is reframe the problem you're solving. Let's say you're building a meditation app. Meditation doesn't turn us into a calm, relaxed person in the snap of a finger. If anything, learning to meditate can turn into a frustrating process. Not quite a painkiller, right? But the benefits of meditating regularly are countless, which makes it a perfect vitamin. So how to get people to commit to meditating? Let's get one thing clear. Yes, the main benefit of meditation is to become calmer, but become a calm person is a weak promise. Why? Two reasons. The promise of reaping benefits sometime in the future doesn't get people moving in that direction now. They usually delay the decision to commit and chances are they never do. When framed as something nice to have, bold promises doesn't lead to action, even if that promise is to turn a person into the wisest, calmest person on earth. Let's try helping them visualize the exact result they'll get. Let's try framing the problem a meditation app solves both as a vitamin and a painkiller business. Vitamin business. Learn to meditate and become a calm person. Painkiller business. Never lose another good night's sleep. These two businesses essentially have the same mission. Help people become calmer through meditation. Both businesses promise outcomes, which is good, but the vitamin business is not clear about what results they will deliver. The painkiller business is. Another example, coaching, teaching, mentoring, all vitamin. Let's say you are building a coaching business for aspiring writers. Get better at writing is the way a vitamin builder will frame their solution. Get publishers at your doorstep is the way a painkiller builder would frame it. Let's think about Starbucks for a bit. Yes, a caffeine boost is equal to a painkiller for many, but Starbucks doesn't have the best coffee and it's more expensive than others. Let's be honest, most of Starbucks products are nice to have. Plus, Starbucks business model relies on a customer showing up day after day, not just once. Does this make Starbucks a vitamin business? How come millions of people flock to a Starbucks branch day after day? The answer, not because of the coffee, because of the unique results they promise. Let's see what these are. One, stay all you can business model. You can get out of your home or office and sit at a Starbucks for hours and no one will come up and tell you to leave. 2. Standardized ordering process. Get your coffee and get going fast. You don't need to get into much social interaction to get a cup of coffee. 3. Comfortable environment. All Starbucks branches have free Wi-Fi, bathroom and air conditioning, which I remember saved me on a trip to Bali at a moment I was struggling with extreme heat and needed to pee and send a text message. Well, framed that way, there is no way someone can claim coffee retailing is a vitamin business, not if executed the Starbucks way. Lessons I learned while building a vitamin business. I attempted to build the Headspace for parents last year and I recently paused. I'll be honest, I believe in vitamin products. I believe in gradual improvement. I believe in learning and growing. So I built a vitamin product for parents like me to learn, 
grow, become better parents. Looking back, I clearly failed at framing the problem I was solving. Through the few iterations that I tried, I promised parents to become a calmer parent, heal from generational trauma, learn to deal with stressful parenting moments. None of these sound like solutions to a big, urgent problem. Does it mean that parenting doesn't have any big, urgent problems? Quite the opposite. It's filled with them. And the founder's job is to frame them well and be specific while doing so. Here's how I would do it differently now. I'd address a specific parenting problem. Sleep, behavioral problems, sibling and family dynamics, feeding, play, homeschooling, etc. I would make my solution clear, such as get your night nice sleep back without harming your parent-child bond, turn tantrums into connection opportunities, stop sibling rivalry before it begins. If I decide to hop back on it, I'll definitely go with something similar to these. It's not only possible but crucial to frame a vitamin business idea as a painkiller. This way you'll make sure you solve tangible problems, have a chance to grow fast and never worry about whether your vitamin business makes any sense in the world at all. People do demand vitamins. Vitamins, the ones you swallow, make up a huge $151.9 billion market. It's no coincidence. People need vitamins. Whatever your figurative vitamin business idea is, there probably is a market for it. So let's recap how to build a vitamin business the right way. One, make sure your vitamin business solves a defined problem. If your promise is that meditation leads to calm, instead of solving the problem, becoming calm is hard, so sleeping with all those thoughts in your head is hard. Two, visualize the results your customers are gonna get. Get your eight hour sleep back, get publishers at your doorstep, let clients find you, not the other way around. Never feel ashamed while speaking in public ever again. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, you might like my other entrepreneurship videos up here. Like and subscribe if you can and I'll see you in the next one.